It's been well established that if a series goes on long enough, chances are it'll end up in space. I mean, we've had Leprechaun in space, Jason X, Hellraiser Bloodline, Critters 4. Hell, even the brave little toaster went to space. Now, the Godzilla series already went to space in Godzilla vs. Monster Zero, which is the only one so far to show Godzilla on another planet. But, one thing they hadn't done yet was make an evil space version of Godzilla. After all, the last movie had a robot version of Godzilla. Why not a space version, too? Look, it was the 90s. People liked to make lots of different versions of things back then. Hell, I think I had about 20 different kinds of Ninja Turtle action figures when I was a kid. Although, if they ever end up making a Flavor Flav version of Godzilla, that's how we'll know Toho is truly out of ideas. Okay, so like I said in the last video, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2 was originally supposed to be the last film in the Heisei Godzilla series, but it did pretty well at the box office, so Toho decided, screw it, let's keep going. Because the previous three films all focused on rebooted versions of some of Godzilla's most popular foes, it was decided that for this movie, Godzilla would now face an original monster. And by original, I mean an evil clone of Godzilla, but... Hey, as far as evil clones go, Space Godzilla's pretty original, in that he kinda looks like if Godzilla fucked a deodorant crystal. Ah, eh, well, he's still a more accurate clone of Godzilla than this thing. The movie doesn't waste any time getting to him either, since Space Godzilla's literally the first thing we see. Either that or it's Jor-El spaceship carrying Superman from Krypton. Anyway, some meteors plummet to Earth, awakening an infuriating Godzilla. Damn, that's the second time in three movies that's happened. Can't Godzilla get some shut-eye without some falling space shit waking him up? No wonder he keeps attacking Japan. It's not because he's evil, he's just cranky. Meanwhile, the scientists at G-Force are busy working on the latest in Godzilla killing technology. Or the latest in Transformer sex toys, I can't really tell. This new robot is called Mogira, and is actually based off a robot originally seen in a 1957 Toho movie called The Mysterians. Supposedly Mogira's an improvement on Mechagodzilla's design, but... I don't know, he's not nearly as ripped as Mechagodzilla. I guess the government must have started testing G-Force's robots for performance-enhancing drugs. In addition to Mogira, G-Force also has a program called Project T, which aims to use psychics to try and control Godzilla's mind. We'll plant a telepathy amplifier on the back of its head, then we can control it. That's Project Telepathy. In short, known as Project T. Okay, uh, thanks a lot, exposition lady. The government wants Miki Sagusa to try and control Godzilla, but she doesn't seem too keen on it. Miki just got her new Angelina Jolie hacker's haircut, and she does not want to risk messing it up. Oh, and she also has a vision of Mothra. Turns out Mothra was pregnant and just gave birth to 10,000 beautiful babies. Good luck sending all of them to college. Even though we're only five minutes in, I feel like this could use even more subplots. You're pretty happy today. What? I said you're pretty happy today. <laughs> yeah, why not? Uh, okay. Looks like a Coast Guard captain talking to the guy who just did all the cocaine he confiscated. Alright, actually these are two G-Force agents, Koji and Kyo, who are busy exploring the island Godzilla and Godzilla Jr. swam to at the end of the last movie and- Oh, what the hell? What did they do to Godzilla Jr.? One of the things I liked about the last movie was that baby Godzilla actually resembled a baby version of one of Godzilla's species. What's with the overly cutesy redesign? Do they think this series needed its own baby Yoda? Alright, this right here is one of my biggest problems with this movie. Even if they still had outlandish plots and giant monsters fighting, overall, the Heisei series had a more realistic tone and featured darker, grittier monster designs than most previous Godzilla films did. So with that in mind, little Godzilla seems... really out of place. Seriously, look at him. He seems like he'd be more at home on Sesame Street than Monster Island. Oh, and there's also a guy called Yuki on the island, but I'll get to him later. Back in Japan, G-Force meets with members of NASA. Well, first I'd like to show you the last image sent from the interplanetary research vessel to NASA. <laughs> NASA wasn't able to come up with an explanation of what happened here. We can only speculate that it was some sort of huge monster. Well, you're in a Godzilla movie, so yeah, that's probably what it was. In case you didn't believe the NASA people, Mothra's twin fairy guardians drop by and tell Miki about it. Your Earth is facing a crisis, a terrible space monster. 
is now approaching the Earth. Is it Gigan? I'm mainly asking because I want to hear this again. Gigan! Rise! Whoa, whoa, fellas, I don't like little Godzilla's design in this movie either, but there's no need to start digging your own graves over it. Oh, right, I said I'd get to this guy. This is Major Yuki, a guy with a serious hate boner for Godzilla. And just wait till you hear his plan to bring him down. We're gonna plant tear gas mines. Tear gas? Really? Godzilla's managed to survive everything the Japanese military can throw at him, including a giant robot made with future technology, and you think tear gas is gonna stop him? Come on, man, he's the king of the monsters, not a student protesting climate change. Oh, and that's not all. He also has a bullet filled with a blood coagulant, and he plans to shoot Godzilla with it using a small handheld gun. He's got a weak zone, a place on his body that he can't protect. Right here. You know, in my Final Wars video, I compared Godzilla to the Death Star after he blew up a planet, but I didn't think he also had his own Death Star exhaust port weakness. And this is no time to be playing Star Wars on Atari, fellas. This is bad. Not only is Space Godzilla rapidly heading towards Earth, but Miki's April O'Neil costume came in the wrong color. And Miss Sagusa, Chief Psychic. I've got a question for you. What is it that you love so much about Godzilla? Well, ain't it obvious? He's some of the most popular videos on my channel. It oh. <laughs> Sorry, you were asking Miki. My bad. And don't be fooled by little Godzilla's cuteness, Miki. This thing is an abomination against nature and the Heisei Godzilla series. But I guess he is a decent way to test out those tear gas mines. Huh. <laughs> you know, it's moments like that that almost make little Godzilla being in this movie worth it. Kind of like whenever Godzilla would smack Minya upside the head. Eventually Godzilla drops by, and I know I made fun of the tear gas earlier, but surprisingly, it actually seems to work. Damn, who knew all it took to bring Godzilla down was a case of watery eyes? All right, the telepathic amplifier's on Godzilla. Time for Miki to put on Cerebro and try to control Godzilla's mind. It's working. Okay, good. Now tell Godzilla to kill little Godzilla and then leave Japan alone from now on. Meanwhile, with Space Godzilla heading towards Earth, it's time to send out Mogira. Ever since G-Force got that new McDonald's sponsorship, they've had a lot more money to make giant robots. Mogira heads into space and meets Space Godzilla in an asteroid field. And since Mogira's supposed to be an improvement on Mecha Godzilla, let's see what he can do. <laughs> They probably shouldn't have used that McDonald's sponsorship money to install a ball pit in Mogira. One thing about this outer space sequence, if you've seen my previous videos on the Heisei Godzilla films, you'll notice I don't really make fun of the effects that much. Even though the Heisei series largely used the same techniques as previous Godzilla films, the model work, costumes, and animatronics were all much better than in the original Godzilla series. Here though, well, let's just say I think this part may have been a little too ambitious for the effects team to handle properly. That looks like Mogira was a dud. How's Miki doing trying to control Godzilla? Godzilla's mind. Amplify the signal. Don't do that! Well, great. You just killed the one recurring character in the series who isn't a giant monster. Just kidding. She's fine. But she's still not cool with everyone else trying to kill Godzilla. You stupid men are all the same. You don't have to kill him! I don't know that controlling his mind and taking away his free will is much better, Miki. Although, if it makes him forget he's gotta raise this thing, then... Eh, maybe it is. No need to worry about that, though. Space Godzilla finally drops by, and he'll get rid of little Godzilla for you free of charge. Now that we're finally able to get a good look at Space Godzilla, he's actually pretty cool looking. Although I should mention that his design was actually taken from a Super Nintendo game called Super Godzilla. In that game, Godzilla could transform into a stronger version of himself, and... yeah. Just add a couple of big crystal shoulder pads and it's basically Space Godzilla. Sadly, Junilla from Godzilla Generation never made it into a movie. Ah, uh, come on, Godzilla. Space Godzilla was just about to kill the little fucker. Just wait a couple of minutes and let him finish him off. Entering a black hole must have really supercharged Godzilla's DNA, since Space Godzilla quickly makes short work of the real Godzilla. He barely even fights back. 
Space Godzilla also takes little Godzilla and traps him in some crystals, so I guess he's not completely evil. Oh, thank God, I don't have to worry about that little shit anymore. If Child Services drops by, just tell him I'm not home. With Project T seemingly a failure, most of the G-Force crew decides to go home, but Miki stays behind, apparently so she can film B-roll for a feminine hygiene commercial. And here's a shocker, this evil clone of Godzilla is actually a clone of Godzilla. The space monster has exactly the same G-cells. We named it Space Godzilla. Hmm, very creative. Now at this point you may be asking, why is there a space version of Godzilla with diamond delts? Well, there is an explanation for that. Sort of. Some of Godzilla's cells ended up in space after he battled both Biollante and Mothra, and... Well, maybe I better let her explain it. One of these cells must have been swallowed by a black hole and pushed out from a white hole. It grew very quickly in its own evolutionary system, much faster than expected. It assimilated crystal organisms and was exposed to tremendous energies from the explosions of stars. All right, look, we appreciate the theory, but could you please stop getting high before these meetings from now on? The army also wants Yuki to pilot Mogira because... I don't know, he thought he could kill Godzilla with a magic bullet. Maybe if you give him a giant robot, he'll actually be able to do it. We also learn the reason Yuki wants to kill Godzilla is because he was friends with the soldier killed in Godzilla vs. Biollante. His best friend was killed just recently. No he wasn't, that was like five years ago. Jeez, the guy faces off with Godzilla and people don't even remember when he died. Ooh, I see Michael Bay guest directed this scene. And listen, Mothra, instead of just warning us about Space Godzilla, why don't you come back to Earth and actually help out? We don't need these things. There's enough cutesiness in the movie as it is. Maybe it's just because it's the magic hour, but do I sense some romance brewing here? Life would be sad without love. Not as sad as if you think about fighting all the time. Don't you understand? He also has feelings. He has feelings the same as we do! Huh, never mind. I think Miki might actually be in love with Godzilla. What's that? You're bored with the romance stuff? Well, here, somebody just kidnapped Miki. Can you tell me who kidnapped Miki? Got any idea? I don't know, it's the 90s, so maybe somebody needed a psychic for one of those Stephen King TV miniseries. Actually, turns out the Japanese mafia kidnapped her, so maybe they wanted her for a Yakuza movie. And holy shit, this guy's a traitor! Why are you doing this? Hmm? Power. Okay, makes sense, I guess. Don't worry, Miki, we'll save you. We're not gonna let you be an extra in one of those guinea pig movies. Man, this Yakuza plotline really came out of nowhere. They must have had some time to kill before Godzilla met up with Space Godzilla again. And that's not the only new development. Ah! Ah! Miki's a fucking Jedi now. Yeah, let's hope Space Godzilla's coming. We're almost an hour in. I gotta hand it to Space Godzilla. Whereas most giant monsters simply destroy buildings, Space Godzilla also rebuilds. Seriously, I think he's building the Fortress of Solitude in the middle of Japan. A tremendous mass of light is pouring around the tower, which now looks as if he's made it into his own fortress. See, even the movie agrees with me. With Space Godzilla wrecking up Fukuoka, it's time to get Yuki to pilot Mogira and stop him. Alright, remember, due to our sponsorship deal, all of your emergency rations are Big Macs, okay? Now that Mogira's on his way to stop Space Godzilla, just where the hell is the real Godzilla? Godzilla sighted at Kagoshima Bay. Personnel intercepted. We gotta set up a defense line now. No, don't attack Godzilla. He's your only hope of stopping Space Godzilla. Big surprise, the army doesn't do shit. But as soon as Yuki hears Godzilla's in Japan, he forgets his mission and tries to fight him with Mogira. Mogira diverted from specified course. Now heading towards... Godzilla! What is Yuki doing? Hmm, maybe getting an unstable guy obsessed with killing Godzilla to pilot our giant robot wasn't a great idea. Before fighting Space Godzilla, real Godzilla's gonna stop at Tokyo Disney and ride Space Mountain. Or at least he would if Mogira didn't try to ruin his fun. Yuki, get back on course now! Look, you don't give the orders around here. Well, we tried asking nicely, I guess there's nothing else we can do. Or just knock him the fuck out. That works, I guess. Mogira better be careful. According to video game rules, one hit from those spikes means instant death, and there's no continues in this movie. Last time they fought, Space Godzilla gained the upper hand, but let's see how Mogira does this time. Fire! We did it. Ah, 
Ah, of course Space Godzilla's not dead. These idiots didn't even wait for the smoke to clear when they said that. Mogira's got some other weapons up his sleeve, though, like a microwave dish in his chest and poking Space Godzilla with his nose. Uh, are we sure this thing's an improvement over Mecha Godzilla? I guess G-Force must have got some inspiration from Rodan in the last movie. Here's a shock, though. Mogira loses again. Uh, damn it, I knew we should have went with Wendy's for our sponsorship deal. They have a way better dollar menu. Well, Mogira may be down, but now that Godzilla's here, he's gonna show Space Godzilla who the real deal is. God damn, who knew giant crystal shoulder pads could make you so powerful? And that's not the only thing Space Godzilla's shoulder pads can do. While this final battle is definitely unique as far as Godzilla fights go, once again, I feel like the concepts in this movie are a little too ambitious for the effects team to handle. Kill. He's destroying the crystal objects. They figure out that Space Godzilla gets his power from the crystals surrounding him, so maybe it's Sid Haig from Galaxy of Terror inside that suit. I know I keep harping on Mogira for not being as effective as Mechagodzilla, but there is one thing he can do that Mechagodzilla can't. Mogira separation mode. Separation mode? Stand by. Wait, 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 wait. I had a Power Rangers gag last episode. There's gotta be something else I can use here. Yeah, sure, that works. No, what are you doing? You're supposed to defeat the monster by having a bunch of robots combine into one big one. You've got this all backwards. So Space Godzilla is using Fukuoka Tower as a conduit to channel the energy from his crystals, which is also destroying the planet... or something? I don't know, Space Godzilla's origin didn't make a whole lot of sense. I don't know why I expected his plan to. The point is they need to destroy the tower, and if there's one thing Godzilla's good at, it's knocking over buildings. Damn, Space Godzilla should have channeled his power through the Tokyo Dome. That'd be way harder to tip over. Look at it this way, Yuki. If you manage to kill Space Godzilla, that's kinda like killing Godzilla. Alright, fellas, you proved the toys from Ogira are gonna be sold separately. I think you can put them back together. We are, we are, we are. No, no, that's okay, guys. We already saw it. You can skip the transformation sequence. And if you were wondering what their plan was for taking care of Space Godzilla... Let's kill Space Godzilla first. Use all weapons. Hmm, good strategy. Okay, using video game rules again, Space Godzilla's weak points should be his shoulder crystals since those are the parts that are lit up. Fire! Alright, now that the source of his power is gone, beating Space Godzilla should be a breeze. Damn, maybe they should have aimed for that yellow thing on his forehead. Now at this point, some of you may be thinking that they're gonna use that blood coagulant bullet Yuki wanted to kill Godzilla with to defeat Space Godzilla since they made such a big deal out of it earlier. Uh, nope, that's not what happens. Instead, Yuki tries to kamikaze Space Godzilla with Mogira. First rule of storytelling, if you introduce a magic bullet in the first act, just forget about it and use a giant robot. I know I already made a Power Rangers reference earlier, but these two are dressed like they're in a Power Rangers movie. And hitting Space Godzilla's weak point seems to be working since he's now blinking like a boss in a video game. Space Godzilla's dying! Take cover! Godzilla! Look, Miki, you can talk to your giant radioactive boyfriend later. Right now, just let him do his job. It helps that Godzilla still has some of that Rodan energy from the last movie he can use. After Godzilla destroys Space Godzilla, his cells ascend into space, where they then went on to create a thousand more Space Godzillas. Well, fellas, you may have lost Mogira, but thanks to your sponsorship contract, that free McNuggets deal is good for life. But let's not forget that Yuki learned an important lesson in this movie. Yuki? Huh? Do you consider Godzilla as your enemy? Well, he did kill my parents and my daughter during his last rampage, so... Yeah, I guess you could say that. Oh right, I forgot that telepathic receiver was a thing. 
Thanks, Miki. I was about to unwind by hitting Pornhub, and it'd be really embarrassing if you could read my thoughts. You do not want to know what kind of shit I'm into. And I guess the Cosmos are back. Your mission was a success. You saved planet Earth. Yeah, no thanks to you. Where the hell was Mothra during all this? Her solo movie didn't come out for another two years. Well, looks like G-Force managed to save the day and waste millions of dollars in futuristic technology once again. Oh, and little Godzilla's still alive. Hooray. While not as successful as the previous two films, Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla still did pretty well at the box office, although critics weren't as enthusiastic, giving it more mixed reviews, and G-fans also consider this one of the lesser entries in the series. And I'm gonna have to agree, because this is easily my least favorite of the Heisei Godzilla series. While it was nice that they got back to original monsters after rebooting so many of Godzilla's old foes, I kinda wish they went with a monster that was a bit more original. Even if Space Godzilla is pretty cool looking, when you get right down to it, he's basically just Godzilla with big pointy shoulders. Not to mention little Godzilla looks like he belongs in a completely different movie. And while I'll give him credit for trying to be a little more creative and ambitious with the monster fight scenes, like I said, I think they needed a bigger budget to really pull him off properly. It's also weirdly plotted, with things like the Yakuza subplot coming out of nowhere and then being dropped just a few minutes later. Don't get me wrong, it's not as bad as the worst Godzilla movies, I just don't like it as much as the other films in the Heisei series. After Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, Toho would go on to release another Godzilla movie a year later, and this time, it really would be the last movie in the Heisei series. I think I'll hold off on that one for now, though. Three Godzilla videos in a row should be enough for people. Especially since there's nobody out my window threatening me with violence. Speaking of which, where the hell is he? I wonder if he's dead. Coming. Let me see it now. Lovely armpit of yours. <laughs>